What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Power Block for June 9th, 2017, the week before E3. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrigan, alongside me as always, for the first time in a while, <laughs> Edward Farnell. I'm and back, everybody. E3 snacks. Nom, 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 nom. I'm just like, for the first time, I'm like, I'm the co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that we're back in the first time for the first time in a while. In a while. Yes. We, I Hello, think everybody. Just- Miss like three recordings and I'm just like I feel really bad because <laughs> E3 is coming <laughs> up and I'm just like uh, so much work to do and so much work really yes. it's, it's really just work and plus uh, there wasn't a lot of Nintendo news and so and discussions well, but I mean, yes there was, there, was, there was some but then we, we compiled a bunch that we get to talk about today that happened over yes. the last couple weeks um Yes, and definitely what happened Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, the Pokemon Direct happened on Tuesday, which was interesting. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at interesting. Uh, although I am excited to have have uh, Pocket on Switch. I'm, I didn't play much of that game, but I feel like Switch uh, will allow me to play that game a little bit more than I was intending when it came to Wii U. Yes. Uh, but it also ruins one of my E3 predictions of, you know, them announcing Smash Brothers because you're not going to put out two fighting games in the same halt, like the same time frame. So, uh, right. I think that gives them a little bit more time though, to polish and add to Smash Brothers for switch. I think that's going to be their next fall game next year. So, but the next port you say. I mm, what you should say. I don't even know. I mean, See, I, I think it's going to be. I do think it's going to be a port. I think it's going to be a Mario Kart situation. I think they are going to add levels and I, uh, I think characters and stuff, and maybe trophies I'm gonna, and stuff. I'm gonna give it to 220 uh, or 2020 before we see the next uh, Smash Brothers. I don't think they're going to port that over to Switch. I just no. Don't. I do. I totally think they are. I totally think they're gonna they're gonna pour as many Switch things over or as many Wii U things over to Switch as they possibly can without being mm-hmm. desperate. No, because I think because of uh uh I'm gonna lay, uh 3DS and Wii U, I think because that came out and both of them did strong. I think at this time, if I was going to do a, a, a next Smash game, I will wait for my new handheld to come out so I could recoup that same business plan that I did with 3DS and Wii U. If I'm Nintendo, I'm thinking it's just, I'm trying to think business wise as Nintendo. Because most of the ports that they brought out are Wii U ports. Well, none of those games actually came out to 3DS. Now, Yoshi 3D World, uh, Yoshi uh, Island, you know, or Yoshi's Woolly World, that's something else because that was a Wii U game that got ported to 3DS. Yeah. yeah. That, and that at least added some kind of, I mean, it wasn't enough for downgrade, but it added a new amiibo and some other new things. Yeah, I have my Poochie you know. amiibo sitting over there on my shelf with the rest of them. Yeah, I have mine still in my box with the game. Uh, I open all my amiibo. I don't care. I'm never getting rid of them. Uh, my amiibos are still packed up. Oh, uh, man. Ed, you're killing me. Hey, I still got my Ganondorf amiibo. You know how that could go. So man. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I do apologize if I sound a little hoarse or if I start coughing during the show. I've been sick, too, the last like week. Just like, not like super sick, but just like that annoying sniffly nose headache raspy voice type sick and i'm just like Ugh. so that's the ch- the change of the weather sickness yeah yeah but i don't know it's just annoying uh so i do apologize if you catch me coughing on on the show i'll try to mute myself as best i can uh when that happens but uh, ed i know we just talked on monday Ed ed is our featured guest on NGR radio proper for Monday's show. So 
Uh, hey. But Ed, what have you been playing this past week and three weeks? <laughs> Um, so, uh, let me start off with PlayStation. Um, I did not go to Xbox, I did not go to 3DS. Um, and because I'll begin to be back to Wii U. Yes, everybody, I apologize to having played Breath of the Wild for Wii U. I, I literally, like, really have been busy. Um, but for PlayStation uh, 4, I actually started um, Iron Setsuna, a really good game. I've been playing that. Um, Play Rhyme for uh, PS4. So you guys can read that review on NGRRadio.com. Just check out at uh, Eddie V's blogs and you'll see what my thoughts and review about that. Um, which I did get in touch with the composer, them a tweet, uh, t- just telling him about the music. And he was just like, like really surprised and like really big thank you. And um, I'm following him now, and he announced that he's doing like the cello for Hellblade for uh, Ninja Theory's new game coming out. So I'm really now got to get that game. I really want to hear the soundtrack now. Um, finished finished up Ryan. Uh, played a little bit of um, Persona Five. Like got a little bit more into that game. Um, Final Fantasy. X HD. I just picked up and started playing a little bit of that. Um, for still uh, near Automata, I played. Um, there's another game. Um, it was something Rundown Moon or something like that. One of the games that I bought from Golden Week. Uh, I ended up playing a little bit of that. Got a little bit far into the intro. It's a turn-based uh, diagonal RPG. Um, so I can't wait till I get a little bit more into that. At, uh, other than that, Xbox One, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, I, I'm i still playing, just picking up some of the skill points and, and documents, you know, trying to get, 100, get that stuff done. Um, Ikaruga, I play actually with a two-player online. Uh, have fun with that. Uh, I haven't started Phantom Dust HD just yet, but I plan on getting into that soon also. Um, I am, am playing Dishonored 2 for my optional opinion, uh, Backlog Bash Blowout for this uh, month. So of anyone who wants to play June 7th through June 20th, um, I will be playing that game for Xbox One. Um, and I, I'm going to be doing a journal for that. So you guys will be able to read my thoughts about that game. Um, I'm truly enjoying that one. I'm enjoying that one on Xbox One. Um, the Blob 2, also playing. And for uh, now, I'm jumping into 3DS. Um, Dragon Quest 8, I started up in, man, just such a good game. Um, I did beat that on PS2, but uh, I want to play the 3DS version. Um, even though I still need to do Dragon Quest 7, but I'll start that at another time. But Dragon Quest 8 is what I'm starting on now. Um, I'll get back into Pokemon soon. Uh, uh, Pokemon Sun, because I'm getting a little bit further into that, grinding up my Pokemon. But that's what I've been playing uh, lately. So Nice. Oh, and nice. God of War 3. Uh, uh, HD remaster for PlayStation 4 is what I played also. Nice. So nice. Uh, man, what have I been playing? I'm, I don't even know what I've been playing. I jumped back into Horizon a little bit, mm-hmm. and I have completely forgotten how to play that game. So I think, <laughs> I think I'm gonna start over. Uh, I think I'm gonna start a new game on Horizon. Uh, but say what you will about you know Nintendo's exclusives, like. Horizon is such a good exclusive for PS4 owners. Like yes. that game is just it's amazing to look at and watch and just see everything happen around it. And like the new things they added to photo mode where you can kind of pose Aloy how you want, like really adds a lot to that game's feature. Like it's man, I if you own a PS4 like horizon is definitely playstation's best exclusive hands down right now uh even going back to like the ps3 games you know i just man i i just i really adore that game i I will say uh horizon is playstation 4 like 
if if you was going to buy a PS4, I would say the three games personally from me or four games, I should say, that you personally need Horizon, Uncharted 4, The Last Guardian, and uh, Persona 5. Rhyme, I do want to add, but because that's available also on other platforms, that will, and it's not that long, you know, that'll be debatable on what you are willing to pay. But having those four games on PlayStation 4 would be a, a must, a must have, I should say. Yeah, I, uh, I've been really looking for a game to play. I just, I don't know. I'm I'm waiting for Splatoon 2 to come out. Like, you know, ARMS comes out next Friday, and I'm really excited yes. for ARMS. But, like, I tried I'm, to I don't know. Much. Yeah, how did you like it? I didn't get to play um, any of it. I liked it. I really enjoyed it. It, it. it takes some time to learn. And people were already, like, masters of the game. So, um... There might be some control issues at time because you got to try to. There's sometimes you just want to act like you with the joy cons being in your hands. Um, for people who are looking at it, you kind of got to hold them straight. So I probably got to put them up a little bit. You got to hold them kind of straight, and you know, you'll be doing this or you'll curve it to curve it, you'll lean this way to go left and right. Um, sometimes if you lean in together, it's to block it. Um, and there's like other functions like jumping and stuff like that. Um, it does take some time to get used to. Uh, I think one of the factors that people are going to have to really deal with is people spamming the throw. Um, yeah. Because if you can't counter, and if you can't counter, hopefully there's a way to counter people trying to grab you to throw you. People were winning a lot that way by grabbing and throwing and stuff. Um, and yeah. there's sometimes some issues on the lock on with the two on two battles, uh, because they don't teach you on how to switch. Areas. So you could be fighting one person, just actually be hitting air because you're not on the right target, and while your other opponent is getting hit, both, opponent, uh, both of the other opponents and stuff. But overall, it's a really good game. I really do hope it sells. Um, the free updates I am looking forward to. Um, and I think anyone who owns a switch definitely needs to pick up this game. Yeah, there's, there's going to be people who are going to turn this game into a fighter. I Um, think this is, I think this is going to be Nintendo's overwatch. Like I really feel like Nintendo owners are going to get attached to some of these characters and like mm -hmm. really, you know, we're going to see the weird fan art. We're going to see the, you know, cosplay, we're going to see all that stuff. And I, I feel like Nintendo could embrace the Overwatch aspect of these characters and like really dive deep into, you know, releasing these little side stories of these characters, like maybe stuff you don't get in the game, but like, you know, just like a little bit, like a little comic strip here, a little animation here, uh, yes. updates that allow you to see more of the backstory of these characters. And, you know, I think that this. I think arms could really take off based on, on what the characters provide in terms of like their look, their style. Uh, you know, I mean, we've already seen, uh, the one character like really take off. What's her name? Like everybody's obsessed with, uh, uh telltale or something like that. Or, uh, the, it's the, the fighter that fights with her hair and yeah. Has a, a interesting physique. That's all I'm gonna leave that at. Twintel, yeah, uh, I think is her it, name. Yeah, I think Twintel. Um, I will say this. So people who if if you go back and you look at the reactions from the Switch presentation and when they showed off arms, people were just like, We don't care about this. And you know, people were being negative and kind of disgruntled about it. And fair criticism. It didn't take no longer till they start start showing more of arms, and then people started getting started the uh, the test punch, and people are hooked. Well, it's so the those same thing. Opinions... It's the same thing oh, they ahead, did with ahead. it's the same thing they did with Splatoon, right? Like they showed it off, and everybody was like, "This looks so stupid." And the more like they showed a little bit of Splatoon, and they kept showing more, and then the more people got interested in it, to the point where like 
it had like a 40% attach rate to the to Wii U and still gets played at tournaments and still gets played, you know, daily by a huge amount of players to where like Splatoon 2 is going to be this huge hit for them. And I yes. like I don't know if Arms is going to have have that much of, of an effect on the Nintendo audience, but it's going to have an impact and I think that the character like what this does different from Splatoon is that it has the characters with with uh you know personality and design and you know like you know splatoon as awesome as that game was your characters were inkling boy and inkling girl they didn't have you know names you know you you obviously customize your own inkling and that's how you played the game but these characters have personality they have uh a cool design to each one of them you know so uh, I think that's really where Nintendo is going to shine with the, this game. Yeah, and, I, and over time, it's going to grow. I know there are reviews that's coming out for the game, um, and uh, you know everything is justifiable. But I still feel like that this is going to be a hit for Nintendo. And even if it doesn't sell a million, I like the fact of the turnaround that people's perspective perception of this game has, uh, that has been through. It, it's always like when Nintendo reveals a new IP, there's some negative or there's some questions. There might be some positive positivity about it. And Nintendo does a good job of giving time to show off more. And then now, you know, I think because of the global, testing for Splatoon, I guess when they do new IPs like that, that's a good thing for people to get their hands on it. Not only to fix any online or bug problems, but to really get give people a better understanding about it. Nintendo is good about doing that. To show more of the game and then let you get your hands on and now you are able to make your judgment or your final call on the game if you're going to buy it or not. Um, definitely when I get a Switch, I'm definitely buying the game. Um, it, it's uh, I, When I seen the trailer, just the two people fighting and then just seeing how it looks, I'm like Power Stones. I love Power Stones. I want this game. Yeah. Yeah, it really gives you it really does give a Power Stone vibe to it mm -hmm. in terms of like the arena and, and how you fight and like or not how you fight, but like where you fight and in the strategy it seems people are trying to figure out. It really has that power stone vibe. Mm -hmm. Uh and people yeah, are arms. I feel like also like I feel like arms is gonna be that really first hard switch game to find. Like yeah, you know, I I'm like there's going to be a million copies of Zelda. There's going to be a million copies of Splatoon and Mario Kart and Odyssey when it comes out. But, you know, there's always that select few Nintendo games that are really hard to find and become really rare in terms of phys the physical form. Yes. For some reason, I feel like arms is going to be that. And people are already loving the music for like it's probably the number one theme music of 2017 that people have been like really like really singing and doing videos of like i i've, I've seen more of arms being sung by people than any other game of 2017 and that might just be me uh but people are just like that theme song is catchy and stuff and i actually enjoyed the theme song i actually love the music of arms um, so and i got all of this just from a uh, uh from the test punch <laughs> you know yeah so th that's just good signs that this game is really i really hope it does be a hit and i really hope that it does sell at least a million or even five hundred thousand copies like i really hope it does do good yeah i think over time it'll do good i think you know initially i think a lot of people are gonna it's one of those wait and see games for a lot of people now i i pre-ordered it because i i'm my goal this generation that I haven't done in a long time is to own a physical copy of every Nintendo published game, yes. even if it sucks, you know, and like, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a, <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be one or two like really bad games that Nintendo publishes, but, uh, you know, I, I really want to own the physical copies of, of Nintendo games. Like, on previous shows, I said I was going all digital this generation and I have gone, all digital on 
PlayStation and on Xbox, but there's something about the Nintendo physical copies that, you know, growing up is just like you collect Nintendo games. That's just what you do. And like, yes. So I, I'm excited for arms, but Splatoon two for me is like the big one. I'm really excited to play some Splatoon because I've been, I've been looking for that competitive multiplayer experience, but like at a casual pace, (laughs) you know, like I, I try playing Halo multiplayer and it's <laughs> like it's not really what I want. And then I try to play Gears of War multiplayer and that's not really what I want. And then I jump back into Destiny for a little bit and I'm like, why am I doing this right now? Like de- I I like Destiny a lot, but there's nothing more I can do in that game really. Yes. You know, without like a raid team or like my friends being online. I'm just like I really don't want to do this right now. So I don't know. I've been struggling to find something to play and, and and like I have all these games and like games I haven't played or haven't finished. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of struggling right now finding something to play. So I've been playing Mario Kart and Tetris. Like those are the two (laughs) go-to games I've been playing. I I don't think you're struggling. I I think you're just like, what game am I going to really commit time to? Uh, and you and you know you kind of gotta force yourself to be committed to a game. Trust me, I know the struggle. <laughs> Did you hear <laughs> my what, what I've been playing? Yeah. So I'm like, and and that's why I like Dishonored too. I was just like, I'm committed to to play Dishonored too at least for two weeks to get this game done and get just get it knocked out. I'm always gonna be jumping around playing different games, but I'm just like I need to be committed to get this game done yeah yeah it's uh i I really want to play zelda is what i really what i want to play i i i'm i got to jump back in zelda because i've been seeing some people with all this armor with all these weapons and i'm be like i didn't see that and um, there's probably stuff that uh people got that you don't have and i'm just like uh what is this doing this is from our ocarina of time what is this doing in this game okay now i it's just motivating me to go back and finish the game um just like metroid 2 <laughs> but uh yeah i need i know i need to get back into yeah well i'm gonna get back into zelda when the uh dlc comes out this summer and then you know there's a new amiibo i gotta i gotta grind my amiibo for the the fierce deity link and yes you know that stuff so i know i need to buy the season pass um i'll probably do it this weekend yeah um hold on i gotta i gotta check something i'll be right back hold on okay and i guess we will be right back everybody so um about the let me give my thoughts out first for the Pokemon Direct. Um, we'll probably be uh be watching it. Um, so Pokemon Tournament DX or Deluxe is coming out for the Nintendo Switch, um, September 22nd. There's also going to be coming out Pokemon Go and Silver for 3DS, so you'll get both games dropping that day. Um, the Pokemon Sun and Moon, they're doing a alternate version so pokemon ultra, ultra sun and pokemon ultra moon that's coming out november 17th for 3ds and it's a alternative take on pokemon like i said sun and moon so there'll be different characters and different stories um you can watch the eight seven eight minute video on youtube on nintendo's uh youtube channel and i enjoy all of it like i cannot wait to play Pokemon again uh, and I really definitely when they announced gold and silver for 3ds, I'm definitely getting. Uh, I kind of want both. I'm thinking I'm, I'm getting both. To, uh, see how the price is going to be for that. Um, probably like nine or probably like ten dollars each. Like uh, Pokemon Red and Blue was. Sun and Moon. I'm definitely buying both uh, because. Uh, me and Corey was talking earlier about poke uh Pokemon and I love the Pokemon games and I believe them being on uh a handheld for me 
allows me to play the game at a leisure pace. You know, I'm able to enjoy this game. Don't have to worry about graphics. Don't have to worry about updates or, um, you know, installations and stuff like that. I literally could just pop in the game, grind to waste some time, you know, get some time down, and then go and battle, do whatever I need to do and explore. I like that from my Pokemon games. And, and good for people who wanted that game on Switch. Poke, the Pokemon company Nintendo have told people always that those games just don't fit on the, on their console. Um, some people don't believe that, but like for me, I do. Um, and I got to tell Corey that po- the Pokemon company Game Freak and Nintendo, they make too much money of Pokemon, the main games on on a handheld than they do on console because they would have to do a whole like the way that Pokemon is designed I don't think that would fit on a console like a regular RPG reason being if you look at games like uh, not Monster Hunter uh, it was like some monster kind of generator um, if, if you look at uh um not not the scale the sky or anything like that because that use a different format for its combat but like something that does a uh, versus jinky gang it, it just does something different and that doesn't fit on switch on that more small scale definitely when you know what pokemon in this gameplay in this design all offers and welcome back Corey. What's happening? <laughs> um, I I was just this guy uh, discussing with the people who are watching live uh, my thoughts about the Pokemon Direct. Oh. Uh, so, gotcha. Well, I guess we can kind of move into that. <laughs> yeah, I had to check some stuff in the kitchen to make sure, like all like the oven and stuff was off from my <laughs> breakfast this morning because, like, sometimes I forget to turn it off. And oh no. Uh, I went and checked to make sure everything was off. <laughs> so, my bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. All right. So, there's a lot to talk about. And we're going to talk about the Pokemon Direct that happened on Tuesday. It was a small Direct, but kind of an important Direct in terms of, you know, Nintendo is is keeping the 3DS alive. You know, like... Mm-hmm. So uh, let's get the announcements out of the way. They they announced Pokken Tournament DX for Nintendo Switch, uh, releasing September twenty second, which I'm pretty excited for. Uh, but yes. they also announced Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for 3DS, which is uh, kind of think of it as like Black and White too. I guess like it's a second yes. adventure in the same area. Uh, new Pokemon, uh, new evolutions, stuff like that. So, uh, what do you think of this, Ed? What do you think of the the Pokemon Direct? Um, and uh, Pokemon Go and Silver is coming out on the twenty second for three DS Virtual Console. Um, I enjoyed it. I loved it. I like the uh, I like the um, the intro that they used, like the trailer uh, with the guy uh, traveling around and doing playing Pokemon. Uh, I I'm glad that they did. I I glad that they are bringing Pokemon into the Switch. Um, not many people said that they played it on Wii U, so this gives them a good opportunity. And plus, they're adding new characters, and they're probably gonna be balancing some things. Um, want to see? You know, I think this would be good practice for people who want to learn that game. So if it ever goes to Evo, they could go to Evo and play that game. Um, I was happy that they, uh, happy that they announced it. That was the only thing I was I, I could actually think of um, because their main games are not coming to the uh, Switch or to a console. That that that'll take a long time for that ever happen. Um, Archer Sun and Moon, of course, I'm gonna buy. Uh, I think the success of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon kind of helped them. And I think they feel like they want to add more to it. Then, so instead of just adding more, let's give them a full game. 
that and maybe some of the new Pokemon that they that were planned for Pokemon Sun and Moon, maybe this one would be part of a story. Um, and they probably so they probably have a bigger story and more that more use that these Pokemon could do. So, um, you know, as as a whole, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was quick to the point. It was just getting people like, you know, we don't actually have a Pokemon game this year for you guys, but here are some alternatives and something that you guys can enjoy for the holiday. So, yeah, um, I think it's, it's that strong. And a lot of people know that um, the Pokemon brand itself is still a big seller, not only to Nintendo, but to the Pokemon company itself. Like if you look at the cars and the merchandise, they still sell big. So um, getting yeah. new, some new video games from them. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Uh, as for keeping the 3DS, uh, the 3DS alive, um, Nintendo is known for keeping that handheld system going for a long time. But this, with the success that they got, um, they're not going to give it up just yet. So I believe hopefully by next year we'll probably see the next iteration of the handheld system. Um, other than that, if they don't release it at E3, maybe we'll get a, a direct for their next handheld itself. Mm, yeah, well, like my big thing with, you know, the, the 3DS staying alive is like, you know, they're releasing the 2DS XL, which is like, you know, the di- I would almost call it the definitive quote final version of the 3DS where you know it's a new sleek design it looks better than than uh you know I think it looks better than the 3DS XL I think it's I don't I don't know there's something about the design I think it sounds or it just it looks like a better fit for in terms of people who want a 3ds and who haven't upgraded to a new 3ds yet so like you know you're releasing this updated version of this handheld and you want people to be excited to go buy it to upgrade and you know ultra sun and moon will give people a reason to go buy this thing this fall and you know yeah we're getting uh ever oasis this summer we're getting hey pikmin you know uh we're getting a lot of good 3ds content at least through this year now like you know i didn't know it was going to come to 3ds after the summer but you know we have all these atlas uh rpgs coming now and you know the 3ds is going to be an rpg machine and that's going to be great and you know as a switch owner who's owned a 3ds since launch i'm a little disappointed in not getting a full rpg a Pokemon game, but at the same time, like it's understandable that you that the Pokemon company wants to release the game on the biggest uh, hardware base, and right now that's the 3DS. And they did that with Black and White when they came out. You know, they released it on the original DS when 3DS came out. Uh, you know, they just work efficiently like that, and they want to sell as many copies as they can. Now, the sales of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon will probably determine the future of the 3ds depending on how many switches they sell this holiday and stuff so for me what what i really want to see is a (laughs) pokemon red and blue 2 updated version for switch but uh i really think that they're going to be working on a new version of pokemon exclusively for switch two or three years down the line you know i don't think pokemon's coming next year to switch and pocken's a good game pocken's a solid fighting game you know it sold over a million copies on wii u it was at e- it's been at evo the last couple of years like it's mm-hmm. it's a solid game and so you know and and plus we're getting pokemon gold and silver which is what a lot of people consider the best of the pokemon games you know right uh you know we we talked a lot about gold and silver uh, when Iwata passed away and how important that game was to the Game Boy and, you know, him being able to program the original game to fit on the same cart as this new game. And, uh, you know, Pokemon is tied so intrinsic- intrinsically with Nintendo and, and that 
Golden Gold and Silver uh, on 3DS is just awesome. I'll probably buy Gold or yes. Silver. I'll probably buy one of those. Uh, <clears throat> but at the same time, like the Switch has spoiled me. <laughs> we say that every episode to the point where like I'm everything I play on 3DS now. I'm just like, man, I wish there was a Switch version of this. So well, it it's just it just shows personally to me that Nintendo and any other company who really believes in Nintendo's product and the sales of it, that they're going to throw some, not money at it. They're going to throw that product and they're going to throw that support. Um, sold 4 million copies. So if Ultra and the Moon sell only maybe one or two million copies, it's still a success story for the that Nintendo fan. And you can't, after three weeks, people who were playing Pokemon Sun and Moon were enjoying it. So I'm looking forward to those same people who are playing it right now. Uh, I mean, playing it not right now, uh, playing uh, Ultra when it comes out. And hopefully if that, if that 4 million sales happen again, then Nintendo, that's the t- business wise, that's a smart move on Nintendo. I think once Switch get past hopefully 10 million, si- 10 million systems out plus, maybe a Pokemon style game coming to it. But the Pokemon games, the side games sell better on the consoles than they do on the handheld. Yeah. While the main series sells more better on the uh on the hand on the handheld because there are parents who still have a problem buying sixty dollar games. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there are people. Like and, yeah. Oh well, to your point on on Go parents ahead. having trouble buying fifty sixty dollar games for their kids and like, you know, <laughs> people don't also don't want to shell out three hundred dollars for a system for their kids either. Like, I think. The new 2DS, accompanied by these Pokemon games, are are just that. Like these are for the parents who want to buy their kids something that's more than just handing them their phone every five seconds. And uh, you know, Pokemon Sun and Moon sold very well for Nintendo. That sold almost 14 million copies to date. Hmm. And so, like, even if Nintendo sells a third of that or a fourth of that. Like it's still a major success for that system, um, right? And see, it's more adults who want Pokemon to come to, uh, to the Switch. Because if you look at Pokemon Go, playing some older teens and adults, yeah, I haven't seen kids ages seven and to nine playing Pokemon Go. That I know of, I haven't seen that age. I've seen mostly adults in all the crowds and stuff. There's there've been mostly older teens and adults. Now I will say that I see more kids playing the Sun and Moon games or the Man games and stuff. Like, even as a Pokemon fan, I buy the Mystery Dungeon games. Not many people do. Um, there's an art game that's out. Not many people bought that, but I mean. Th- if you were a Pokemon fan, you Pokemon fan, you would get that. If kids really want that Pokemon game, they're gonna get it for 3DS. They're gonna get it for the handheld. It's the adults who want it for Switch. Right. You and know. that's I mean, I think that's why I want Pokemon on Switch, is because like I don't know. I like that device a lot, and I'm an adult <laughs> that wants <laughs> to play Pokemon. So Right, uh, but because I'm, like I, I had this, I had uh, this really interesting uh, experience when I went on vacation, you know, at the beginning of May, and my cousin was playing 3ds and he played Switch too, but he doesn't really care about like graphics and the technology because he's six, mm-hmm. you know, like yes you give someone that like anybody under the age of 10, a 3ds, they're going to be excited that they just get to play with something, you know? And like, right. That's something that I think a lot of people still forget about. And, you know, especially 
people who keep up with everything like us and you know they they are like why isn't nintendo moving forward why isn't you know why are we still getting this on 3ds why does 3ds still exist it's seven years old like you forget the game boy lasted what 13 years essentially yeah like you know so i mean i think that they don't they don't have a problem keeping the 3ds alive for the fact that you know parents are buying it for their kids because kids don't care they just want to play games right you got to think the game boy name alone has been has has probably been one of the longest um probably fr- not franchises handhelds effort you got game boy you got color you got events you got sp it's still under the game boy uh name whether you want to say events or not they didn't switch it to ds to almost well, 2004 2005 name going from starting slowly to out to millions and now the 3ds is doing the same thing you know if those consoles that people for kids and adults for anyone who could pick up and play if those consoles are still being brought in and money a lot of money is being made on those consoles or, or handhelds i should say why take a franchise as big as pokemon and switch it to a format that you know, people base that system on graphics, online play, or, you know, uh, exclusivity and stuff like that. Like, people who are frank, if they're all about console systems like that, Pokemon, to me, personally, doesn't fit that. You know, it fits the, it fits handheld because it's just a, a easy game to see what you could catch or give you the option to catch who you want to and use who you want to and not be big about graphics be is more about the experience yeah and sometimes consoles don't give you that same thing that handheld could give you you know if 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 you want pokemon sun on switch do you want that same limited gameplay that that game offers on a console just because it's a Pokemon game. Yeah. Well, people will want to want to expect more from them. Well, they can't give you more because Pokemon game. If they go out of that, then it's not a Pokemon game no more. It's a Final Fantasy style RPG cutscene long long game. Yeah. yeah. It, and it, that to me personally it loses that appeal if it ever goes into console. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think if they're going to do it for console, they need to look at it as, you know, I think they need to look at it in terms of like, not give it the Breath of the Wild treatment, but like mm-hmm. look at it, look at that game and and look. Switch is a hybrid console, right? We need yes. to give people the experience of it fits the same as. You know, it fits well as a portable as well as gives you the experience you want on console. And Breath of the Wild, you know, even though it was a a, a Wii U game first, it still had that distinction of, you know, I can play this in handheld mode and grind through some shrines or look for Korok seeds, or I can plug it into my TV and have this big wide open adventure and go tackle these big tasks like Breath of the Wild did that so well. And it's it's going to be interesting to see how not only Nintendo internally and not only the Pokemon company, but the industry as a whole, because there are, though they're small rumors and, and stuff, but, you know, there is a small rumor that was brought up on the Game Informer show about two weeks ago that Sony is looking into creating a switch like device and Microsoft on a release like a a survey asked how many of you are working are looking to buy a switch in the next 12 months. Would you be interested in an Xbox style thing like that was on their survey? There are images out there that ask that question. And so like 
now you have to look at how the industry is going to adapt on what Nintendo has created. You know, they've created this device that everybody wants. And like, well, it's, it, and it, it's, that's been a, th- oh, go ahead, Corey, well, before I, I was, get my answer. I was, Cause I can, I can explain it to me. Well, I was just going to wrap it around back to Pokemon and it's like, if you're going to make a Pokemon game for Switch, you need to make sure you take everything into consideration instead of just the handheld portion because that's why Pokemon's so popular. It's a, You can accomplish something in five minutes. You can hang out with your friends and trade across a Wi-Fi or ad hoc or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can do all these things that are super easy in portable mode. But how are they going to how are they going to animate gym battles on the TV? How are they going to animate these giant important things that you know you don't really get a lot on the portable version like there's going to be a lot more effort and a lot more production put into a switch version uh and i think you know people are disappointed now and it's it's the zelda thing people are disappointed now that they're not getting pokemon on switch but they're going to be a lot happier with the result once they do because there's going to be a lot more time effort and thought put into you know the story the animations, the the creatures, you know, all these things. You're going to probably be able to do a, a Mass Effect, maybe not to that extreme, but like a Mass Effect style character creation. Like people are going to be really happy with that stuff. Right. Well, because uh, uh, I don't know if we got another topic to move on. Can I address the Microsoft and Sony part? Yeah. Um, Microsoft and Sony, they look at Nintendo success and they want to copy that success because they're think of business. So we need to jump on it. What I'm doing research. Xbox, uh, the connect really wasn't a research and the move really wasn't a research because we sold so well and the marketing for that system was so done so well, they figured they could do that same thing. And if they could do that same thing and not say do it better, but do it to a point where um, it's bigger. They going do. They're gonna do that. When we you came out and they had the game pad, regardless of if it's sold or not, you see Microsoft with the Surface Glass. You see how they did it with the Vita for a place for a PlayStation. So they were trying to copy off Nintendo because once again that idea had some business success, regardless of how you see it. 13 million systems. That's to me personally, that's still good. If you don't sell a system at all, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, Sony and Microsoft. Oh. I agree. I think uh, before we move on, just a last yes. point on like, I really feel like if Xbox did one, I wouldn't care just because like most of their games play better on TV anyway, like, you know, a Halo match or a Gears of War campaign or something like mm-hmm. that. Like those, those just the way that box is set up is in the games that they are putting out are just more of a. It's more of a TV experience, but in terms of of the games that I play on my PlayStation, I wouldn't mind having a handheld PlayStation 4 that, you know, just play digital games to play a game like Horizon on the couch while I'm sitting next to my wife watching TV, or, you know, I wouldn't mind grinding a little bit in Destiny, or I wouldn't mind, you know, playing some of these experiences like uh you know even journey or something like you know some of these smaller experiences would fit really well in a handheld form i just Mm -hmm. don't know how they're going to if 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 sony did something like that or microsoft to play xbox one or ps4 games like i don't know how they would make that can that like compact of a of a machine and make it cheap enough for people to want one well to think about this how do they market something to make it feel like a different experience Mm -hmm. that you can't get on okay just because you got switch and you got 3ds they both offer you two different experiences you can say Mm -hmm. yes for the games but the thing about this guess what i can't take my controllers off my 3ds and hand it to somebody yeah 
meet you physically sometimes or play online, whatever the game is. And we have to battle face to face. With Switch, yeah, I could take a controller and give it to you. Could keep my controllers on and we could just watch, you know, or you could just sit back and watch me play. I can't watch you play anything on 3DS because it's 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 a tiny screen. But maybe I want to see your playthrough of Shovel Knight. You know, maybe I want to watch that. And then maybe you can hand me the controller because uh, I, I might, you know, the joy cons might be uncomfortable, but that bigger pro controller, that might be, that that might help me with the game. That offers me a different experience than what the 3DS can do. And Nintendo, not Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft don't know how to market that well. They don't know how to make games or build games in that manner to offer that experience. Mm -hmm. Sony, yes, they had two, they had two uh, handhelds, but how much support did Sony themselves put into it to offer that experience that's going to be different than what uh, their consoles can? Uh, Microsoft, if Windows, if that Windows Phone did the same thing, could they offer anything different that they can't do on their console? Because God of War, that's the same experience on PSP and uh, Vita or whatever. The same experience as a console game. But guess what? If I play Paper Mario on 3DS, Ouija games experiences Mario Luigi never came to console yeah. experience on on there Paper Mario was a console exclusive you know console ex- experience so I could play it on there and it wasn't until uh to when they both met that we both got that experience that both gameplay experience but that's only on 3DS they're not both on the same system so Nintendo knows how to offer different experiences with their games. Sony and Microsoft don't know how to do that just yet. And if they're going to do that, Sony alone, even if no one else put games on their system, Sony alone would just have to take the, would just have to continue to support that system with games or ideas that they can't put on console. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, and that's something Nintendo's done really well is defining their experiences between their console and handheld. There's been a few times where they said, oh, look, we are experimenting with this style of game on 3DS, which is what I still think Metroid Prime Federation Force was, an experiment that they didn't uh, have to blow a ton of money on on a you know console-like experience you know, right. but they wanted to make this multiplayer game and they wanted to see how fans re- would react to this style of game. And, you know, I still, I still personally think Metroid Prime Federation Force was a decent game. Like, I still really like that game. It was just really hard because they didn't balance it for single player versus multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, but I did, I do think that that is a good idea. And I do think that 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 sort of game will eventually come to switch because they, I think they are looking for a cooperative first person style game to get that audience in the door to switch. Uh, because uh, that's, that style of game opens a door to a new audience and Nintendo is looking for everybody they can to buy a switch. And you know, everybody is buying a switch. I talked to a lot of people where I work who, haven't owned a Nintendo console since N64 or GameCube and they're like, oh yeah, Switch looks really cool. I can't wait to play all these games on it. I'm like, well, you've you've kind of missed missed a lot of stuff in between that. But and, okay. And, and sure. People people Sony and Microsoft gotta be aware of thinking the Switch is a complementary to their system. No, it's still competition because guess what? People are, if people start buying more games on Switch, your activity use on your PlayStation, on, on your Microsoft, if it comes to a survey poll, it's going to show how many people are playing actually on your system, on that system, and how many people are playing on your competitor system. 
Yeah. Switch doesn't complement the uh, Switch doesn't complement um PlayStation because that just makes everybody who want those games on PlayStation to come to Switch. And if that happens, your system is going to become irrelevant. Why would I want a PlayStation Four if that game is coming to Switch and I could take that full experience with me on the go? So yeah. they need to be they need to be aware of that. So I'm yeah. just saying that's me. So, what's our next topic? <laughs> um things um, yeah let, let me pull it up here uh yeah so our next topic is um oh okay so this is this is gonna be a quick one because i know how you feel about it uh nintendo switch players who bought nba playgrounds early and i think this still applies until their big patch comes out for online play Oh, the Shaq food thing. Yeah. Uh, players will be... It's Switch players who early adopted this game will be getting Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn for free uh, if they purchase before the online patch, which I'm really excited for because I think Shaq Fu is going to be really bad and really hilarious, but <laughs> still really fun. It looks janky as ever, so I can't wait to get you. Can I say first off? I think that's that's this is a good promotion. This is a good marketing for them, I and mean, it is good that you know. Yes, we have problems, so to make it up because we're still trying to fix the problems, we're going to give you this game for free. That's a good. That's a good two in one deal. Mm -hmm. That's really good. It's very unexpected that a publisher or developer would even think of doing that, but you know, kudos to them for that. Now. Now, my thoughts about the game though is separate from what the story is all about but i yeah. i congratulate them on that you know that's really cool for people who bought the game early um and they're getting the game for free yeah you know i'm i'm really excited because i i know shaq fu is really dumb but you know i i got nba playgrounds because i wanted that nba jam style experience just to mess around with and I think the game is okay. I think unlocking players is really stupid. Uh, the way you go about doing it and getting duplicates and card packs and stuff, I think that's really dumb. Like, I, I hate that so much because, you know, you unlock all these players, you, if you don't keep up with NBA or in the history of the NBA, you've never heard of half these players. A lot of them aren't very good. They're just there because they're iconic players uh, from the past. Or, like, you know, you unlock one really awesome player and then you have to figure out how these players mix and match together. Uh, and, like, I wish the card thing was really different. But as a game, it's fun to play. Uh, I do have to turn off my rumble, though, because they still haven't patched the excessive amount of rumble that you get when you play that game. Gosh, that game rumbles so hard. It's just, like, my, my wife, we were sitting on on the couch the other night and I was playing it and my wife was like, what is that awful buzzing sound? I'm like, it's my switch. I'm sorry. I'm playing this basketball game and this, the rumble is just way too loud. And so like, I, I ended up turning it off, but, uh, the letter that they made on their official Facebook page and I'm sure on their website and Twitter and everything else you can think of was, was, mm -hmm. was really, a upfront apologetic letter it was really like it wasn't some pr statement you know you could tell that this the the organ the company was really sincere about not delivering what they had promised you know within a certain amount of time frame and they they really this is just an olive branch of you know we really want to put our games on switch and we respect the switch players and so here's, you know, we're sorry. So you're going to get this game for free type thing. It was really, it was really nice. I was impressed, honestly. Uh, it almost makes me want to be like, no, it's okay. I'll still pay for Shaq Fu because you guys are just genuine and sincere. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. but uh, I'm excited because I was going to get Shaq Fu anyway. And now I get it for free. So, yes. Yay. Unless it's like a physical copy, then I'll go buy it. Oh, okay. Then not just ask. You should see me post a picture of myself asking. Doing like, why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<sighs> oh, then I'll be so. I'll probably put like hash, hashtag supports uh, Switch games. <laughs> Ed, you sound like a robot again. Oh, whatever. Like, there's nothing I can do now. So what's the next topic? Um, okay, so the next topic is uh, The Binding of Isaac and Super Meat Boy de- Dev's uh, next game is coming to Steam and Nintendo Switch first called The End of Nigh. The End of Nigh is a platformer where people, where players take control of an internet streamer, Ash, who survived the end of the world. Uh, along your journey, you will collect video game cartridges and tumors across 12 plus explorable chapters and over 600 levels. Uh, it's a pretty large game. It's uh, pretty exciting. I I like Super Meat Boy a lot. I'm still not sure how I feel about The Binding of Isaac, uh, but I know Matt really loves The Binding of Isaac. So... Uh, and, and I'm not saying that it's a bad game. I just, I'm not into those types of games really, but to see them go back to making a platformer is really exciting. Yeah. I looked at this trailer and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm like from, from reading the description that it was, it didn't seeing what the game was about i'm like uh no i'm like you guys really got lazy and really thought and really think that well some people gonna buy it that's fine um i i just think their creativity is there no more i think they just really just got lazy felt like they needed to make some some levels that look like that and use their expertise with with some super meat boy and just make that kind of game just like uh you guys don't have enough money or a budget to i I don't know it's me and i don't want to hate but my criticism is just that this is a bender done that kind of game and it looks like they're not track record, but it looks like their philosophy is that kind of solid game, and they don't know how to put, evolve from that. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, within the game, uh, if you you collect uh, the twenty plus cartridges, they all have their own mini games uh, attached to them. So after you beat this game, if you have any interest in keep playing, uh, they have the mini games there too. So um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get it. I'm excited Switch is getting more indie support, and that game mm-hmm. will appeal to a lot of people who are fans of those games. So um, I don't know. I would rather spend my money on this next game, Sonic Mania, is officially coming on August 15th. And Woo-hoo. it's going to be twenty dollars across all platforms, including the Switch, uh, which is exciting. Yay. No, no Switch tax, uh, as we will get into later. Uh, but to be fair, the Switch tax doesn't really bother me. You know, the quote ten dollars more it doesn't really bother me because, like, right? I don't know if you are worried about ten dollars on a game on a system that you know you may or may not own. Maybe you should not be playing video games and putting your money somewhere else <laughs> if you're worried <laughs> and, about ten dollars. And guess what, people? If you buy a game digitally on a Nintendo or Microsoft platform, in some states, even Sony's platform, you gotta pay tax. So your digital game is not gonna be at that price. So get used to it. <laughs> you're not gonna be paying nineteen ninety nine. You're probably gonna be paying like twenty three some dollars, depending on what state you in for that tax. Yeah. Like I do it for my Xbox when I put the Nintendo consoles. I pay the tax. So ten dollars more, that's no big deal. No big deal. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Um I'm excited for Sonic Mania though. I I really played a lot of Sonic one and two when I was little and mm-hmm. This kind of this is gonna 
probably be what a lot of Sonic fans want in terms of a Sonic game. Like, I don't really care for the 3D games that much. I I tried with Sonic Lost World on Wii U, and I tried with uh, Sonic Boom. And, like, I think the 3DS games got a little bit... They were a little bit better than the Wii U games, but I just... I don't know. I don't really care about Sonic as a game character anymore. Uh, but Sonic Mania looks interesting in terms of nostal- from a nostalgic standpoint and the fact that Sonic or Sega did what I think Nintendo should do and go out and find a company and a person to lead a team to make the game that fans want. You know, I think S- Sega was really smart in doing that. And so they're making the game that they want and that fans want. Uh, so Nintendo, take notes. <laughs> take notes from Sega. Right. Sega does what Nintendo don't. Am I right? Am I right? Exactly. You're right. Oh, but uh, yeah, Sonic Mania looks cool. I will probably end up getting it because it looks cool. Sonic Forces, probably not. But Sonic Mania looks good. Yeah. Which I think they'll probably show more of at E3, hopefully. Yeah. Sonic Forces. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next game really excites me. Square Enix announces their next project from Tokyo RPG Factory, which is coming to Switch called The Lost Sphere. Um, yes. Really excited for this. I am waiting for my imported version of I Am Setsuna for Switch uh, to show up. And... I really like the what this studio was open for. The studio was created to specifically appeal to the Super Nintendo, maybe early PS1 era RPG enthusiast. Mm-hmm. And I am Setsuna from everything I heard really gave off that vibe. And I'm yes. really I'm really excited to play I am Setsuna because I haven't played it yet. But the fact that you know they're they're bringing this game to Switch also really makes me excited. Yes, um, I seen the trailer. The music, of course, is phenomenal as always. And I was just looking at this game. I was just like, "Yep, uh, Square Enix gets it. They they completely get it. These little small games are going to make them more money or keep their <laughs> keep their lights on while making these big budget titles." So guess what? We don't get Kingdom Hearts 3 for the next three years. Final Fantasy 7 for the next three years. If I could get six good RPGs from this small little company on Switch and 3DS or PlayStation or whatever they want to support, if I could get those good experiences, by the time those games come out, I wouldn't even care. I got I got my money. Personally, I have my money's value and entertainment and of games than just a $60 game that I've been waiting for seven plus some years to be done made. And majority of it's going to be full of cutscenes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I This game, like the art style of this game just looks amazing. Yes. And I, uh, I, I kind of want to thank the the developers who made Bravely Default, I think it's because of that game, Square Enix decided to go this route of making games like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, man, this game looks, this game looks better than I Am Setsuna. Like, honestly, I just like the way the colors pop, but it still feels like an old school RPG and like, I don't know. The hand painted backgrounds mixed with some of the 3D stuff is just. It looks really cool. I. If you haven't seen this trailer, you guys should definitely watch this trailer. The Lost Sphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, just. It just looks really good. Uh, the, the story for this game is, you know, what if all your. All the people you loved in the world just vanished and you're out to search for what happened to them before the world ends and like. Yeah, that's kind of a very generic JRPG trope, but you know, I I I'm interested to see this game, and I really I really want this game actually. So uh, check it out; story, it looks really cool. Yeah, the story is kind of confusing because you, you some people are just like, "Where well, wouldn't you be? Wouldn't you not exist? Neither." But that's not the case. So 
um, we shall see how it all goes down. Yeah. Super, super excited for it. Um, okay. So we always talk about how Nintendo deserves equal treatment for games being released across all platforms. And we are starting to see companies kind of not do that with EA and FIFA and, and, you know, Skyrim probably not being up to snuff with the current generation versions of those games. But Mm -hmm. Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 for Switch is getting a deluxe edition with season pass, exclusive DLC, and all, all kinds of stuff, which is really cool to see like i'm glad Mm. somebody took the initiative to do that for a nintendo version Mm -hmm. so i just i don't know how i feel about lego games all that much but the fact that they're doing this is just it's really nice it's really nice to see Um, they they sell they like i said they sell too much on a nintendo platform to to short change yeah and I know NBA 2K is doing the same thing. They're get, Nintendo Switch is getting the deluxe versions of that game too, uh, mm-hmm. which I'm really excited about. But now I'm conflicted on which version of NBA 2K to buy because the special editions have Shaq on the cover, but they also put Kyrie Irving on the <laughs> on the regular edition. And as and as a Cavs fan, I'm torn. As a cast fan, you're gonna go with the other version. <laughs> Shaq. I'm like, really? Shaq? Oh, he's on the cover for no. Just it's gonna be NBA 2K. People who have the Switch version are gonna be trying to be over their friend's house and playing them so they could talk smack in front of their face. <laughs> yeah. So um, like, uh can I address the feature thing real quick? Yeah. Uh my thing, my thing with the FIFA thing is, I, I really don't care about it. Um, after people experience the story about Frostbite and their engine, I don't care if Frostbite don't run on Switch. I'll I'll stick with Unreal Four. Like if 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 games are working fine on Unreal Four on Switch, stick with that because. <laughs> with Frostbite engine and what I think Frostbite 2 or whatever that happened with Mass Effect Andromeda your problem on Switch don't even bring that engine to the system go ahead and give me 360 versions of that game because guess what it's going to sell out on on Switch Yeah. and if people really want FIFA they'll just buy it on Xbox One yeah yeah, I don't I don't really care a lot about FIFA either. I I know it's missing features, but it's the features that like as a fan as a casual fan of the series, I don't really care about. Like I enjoy playing a good soccer match with someone like couch like couch uh competitive, like someone comes over, I throw them a controller and we play. Like that's what I like about FIFA. I don't care about mm-hmm them trying to tell a story in their story campaign mode. I think that's dumb in sports games. Like I don't care. And that's like, that's the big feature that's missing. I think is the, the story campaign mode where you uh, lead, not your created character, but a character from like, I don't know, somebody that they made up and you watch this character grow through the ranks of, of the soccer leagues or whatever. Right. So I don't personally care about that. And like, I will probably buy FIFA for switch to have a soccer game on the platform. Uh, but it's FIFA is not one of those games I go out and need to buy every year. You know, I think the last FIFA game I owned was the Wii U version, uh, uh-huh. of 13. So, uh, yeah. So like in, in terms of missing features and stuff, I could care less. And like, if if we already knew Frostbite can't run on Switch, like we already knew that, so I don't understand why people were throwing a fit when they said FIFA wasn't running on Frostbite for Switch. It's like we knew that engine doesn't run because on Switch anyway. Of, because they're thinking that if Frostbite was able to run on Switch, we'll get their other games and stuff. Guess what? Even if Battlefield One did sell, 
nobody really didn't care about that game. The folks that I talked to were just like, yeah, I gave up on that game two days after I got done playing it. Yeah. Like, I, think the, I think the big games that people expect to maybe come to Switch would be like the Star Wars games because there's going to be a lot of casual crossover there. Uh, but mm-hmm. even then, like Battlefront 2, like I don't care if that comes to Switch. I'm going to play it on my TV. Like I, I'm going to play it on my PS4 probably. You know, I, I, right. I would expect something like Lego Star Wars to come to Switch or maybe a, an offshoot game specifically for Switch. But in terms of, of these, like, because Battlefront is built on the Battlefield in like engine straight up, like no alterations to the Frostbite engine or anything. Like it's right. It's basically Battlefield in space. So if that game one wasn't coming to Switch, like I I don't care. And like if right. FIFA is based off their old engine, who cares? Is it does it play like FIFA? Does it look like FIFA? Does it feel like FIFA? Then what do you what do you care what engine it's on? So, because they feel like they're, they're charging sixty dollars for this old ported ported game, it should at least be on the same level as the other two games. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it is it is what it is, but uh, I I prefer their EA originals to be on Switch than something like Battle Battlefield or Battlefront Two. Like, I'm like. You have problems with your first game. Let's see how. Let's see what you do when the reviews come out. Because I will wait for the reviews to come out for uh, Battlefront Two. Uh, I would rather see the reviews and see if they learn their lesson. Because big talk is showing off can always be good, but when the game releases and there's problems with it, what was all that hubbub marketing talk for? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm still. I'm gonna get FIFA for Switch. If EA decides to bring anything else over, great. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I don't care if it's not available on Switch. I'll get it for something else. The internet is so loud about stupid things that yeah. it's just. I just. I don't even care anymore. Like, I'm so tired of opening my Facebook feed. Every five things has something negative about. Hey. Uh, EA's doing this. Hey, Activision's doing this. Hey, Nintendo's games are being ported to Switch. Like, that's a problem. Like, I, I don't care, man. Like, the internet is so loud for clicks that it's just like, it's annoying <laughs> to the point where like, <laughs> I just don't even feel like opening Facebook ninety percent of the time anymore because I know I'm going to see something ridiculous. And it's the same way with everything else. Like. Whether somebody's yeah. talking about what's happening in the government, whether somebody's talking about something that's happening with their favorite sports team, it's just like all this negativity around everything, man. And it's just there's always something wrong with something, and it's just ugh, just shut there's up. Gonna be, <laughs> there's gonna be voiced opinions, and you just can't. There's gonna be people who want you to agree with their opinion, and some people who want to argue about your opinion it is what it is that's the internet um but i will say this guess what ea nintendo has a strong lineup of games coming out this fall with indie for fall and winter so guess what people are still going to be supporting switch and buying games on the system yeah like and, and, then- it, and if they talk about that game more if they talk about the game it is what it is. Yeah, like I mean, and Nintendo has the strongest lineup. This, this, like starting at the beginning of the year, like Nintendo has the strongest lineup we've seen in years, and a consistent, the strong consistency of its lineup. You know, Mario Kart Eight, right. Deluxe, Breath of the Wild, Fire Emblem, Splatoon, Arms. Now we got Pokémon Tournament. We've got two Pokémon games coming for 3DS. You know. You've got Hey Pikmin, we've got Ever Oasis, we've got Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Warriors. Like, I still don't know if Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but that's soon. Like, you know, and then heading into next year, I'm still guessing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to be their March game next year uh, for a US release at least. So we're going to have, like, next year, we're going to have Fire Emblem proper. We're going to have uh, Xenoblade 2, probably going to have some sort of Smash next year, probably. Like, 
there's Nintendo's been so smart through 2017 and into 2018 mm -hmm. with major releases for their platform. Like third party isn't going to matter for Nintendo because they have so many first party, whether they're ports or not, whether they're, you know, new games or not. Like you can't deny how strong their lineups have been for these consoles. You know, even though Sony and Microsoft kind of had a strong first 2016, we're still waiting on, okay, what you guys are going to do, oh, 2017, I'm sorry. What, you, what are you guys going to do for the rest of the year? Even with third-party support, because the only game from Microsoft that I could think of that I won't, like I always say, has been Cuphead. Pretty much for PlayStation 4, the only game that I'm looking forward to is Detroit Become Human, if that comes out. Other than that, I pretty much, unless there's a sale going on, oh, and Final Fantasy 12 HD, but that comes out next month. Besides those two games on Play PlayStation 4, nothing else from third party excites me that I care about. Well, Hellblade on Ninja Theory. Gosh, um, Hellblade looks so good. Like you know, I love, I love Ninja Theory so much. Like, yeah, and and that's why I would, and that's why I would buy that game. I, I don't know I was talking about the composer, um, but like Ninja Theory, they make some really good games. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, the it's debatable, uh, but I would support them. I, I'm like you guys made Devil DMC, and you guys made that game one of the best Devil May Cry games I ever played. Yeah, so I'm like, all for supporting Ninja Theory. Like D Ninja Theory's games like are debatable whether you like them or not, but you can't right. deny that their vision for their games and their heart that they pour into their games is is debatable. Like their heart is just pouring out into their games, and that's why right. I support a company like Ninja Theory. And I am so excited! Yeah. I'm so excited for Hellblade. Like I didn't really care for Enslaved, but I love DMC, and I've really enjoyed what I played of uh, Heavenly Sword. Which is really sad that that game, mm. that game's not getting a sequel. I'm that game was that game was a really good launch window game for PS3 that nobody played because PS3 was six million dollars. But yeah, Ninja Theory is just. Ugh. I think Heavenly Sword probably just needs a new developer. I think what they were trying to do was they were trying to show off all the features that the PlayStation 3 was able to give off and I think Ninja Theory just they just didn't have it right. Don't forget this was their first game. This was their debut game. We never heard of Ninja Theory until Heavenly Sword. So yeah, they didn't get it right but you know, Enslaved was a good game. DMC was a really good game. And hopefully Hellblade is a terrific game, like, you know, for them stepping out on their own. And I would like to see more games from them because I feel like, yeah, they're on the verge of being like Platinum or, but I'm like something about Ninja Theory speaks their individuality. And that's what I like about them. That's what I like yeah. about that game. Like if I heard be like, yeah, they're making a Mario beat em up game and Ninja Theory is making it. Let me go find game. Let me go to game stuff and pre-order the game right there. <laughs> Like, yeah. shoot, I'm down for if they do that. Yeah, it could be so silly and it could be broken as ever. Ninja Theory is producing, uh, developing it. Yeah, let me go. Yeah, uh, I I am really upset that that game isn't getting a physical copy though, because I would I would buy the physical copy of that game just because. Oh, for uh, of Hellblade. For, yeah. Oh, what thought they were? No, I mean, not yet, at least. I mean, I, I assume it will eventually, just because, like, everything eventually gets a physical release, but right now it's just digital only. <laughs> I'll still buy it day one. Yeah, so will I. I, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, so Nintendo, back to Nintendo. <laughs> yes. Uh, their online service has been delayed into 2018. Uh, but it's going to be $20 a year and you get access to a Netflix style. It seems like of NES games like right now they have only announced three games for the service, which is Super Mario three, Dr. Mario and balloon fight uh, with 
with online functionality, which is different from what they announced earlier, where you would get access for a month and then the game would be taken away unless you paid for it. Yes. I think. Now it just looks like, uh, basically it looks like Xbox Game Pass, where like you can download any of these games as long as you're paying for the service and play them. Which is cool. Yes. Which is which is real cool. And Super Nintendo games are being uh, considered, they said, for this service. But uh, the twenty dollar a year thing allows you to play online, which I mean we knew it was coming eventually. You know, yes. Nintendo wasn't gonna be free forever. But as long as we are getting that free arms and splatoon DLC, like I'm it's fine. It's fine with me. Right. Uh, and and if like I said, if they offer discounts for the game, which I think they, they said they was gonna do. Um and you know, with that being connected to your my Nintendo account, you buy games, you'll still get points. And maybe hopefully if you're uh if you do have the online series ser- um season and maybe a big game is being released. If you buy it on day one uh for that release, you might get double points. Like they they could do a lot of stuff with that. And twenty dollars is not bad you pay twenty dollars for some season pass to a game you know nothing about let me rephrase that you pay forty dollars season pa- for a season pass that was just some costumes aka batman arkham knight <laughs> and on top of them charging you sixty dollars so yeah. if you can't pay twenty dollars a year come on now yeah again if you're complaining about twenty dollars a year you probably May want to rethink your uh, financial strategies. <laughs> right. Uh, maybe video games you should be worrying about more than video games if you're worried about 20 bucks a year. Uh, I'm excited to just see how this works. It's seemingly working well for Microsoft in terms of the Game Pass thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I wish, you know, I almost wish Sony would do that too. Like, I think this is kind of the future of classic games as being games for a service instead of like you know streaming them or or purchasing them outright but i mean for me i'm probably going to purchase the games outright anyway just because i would like to just have them uh but you know it's good that they outline the service finally and you know another year of playing for free i guess is is good for everyone too uh Especially with Splatoon and Arms coming, because those are going to be big online games. I feel like that and Pokken, I'm sure, is going to be big online. So, yes. uh, All right. So, the last thing I kind of want to get to is uh, Japan earlier last month announced a bunch of cool Splatoon 2 accessories, uh, cases, and that cool pro controller and the Joy Cons and stuff. Well, they announced they're also coming to the West. So, Yay! Who's excited for some pink Joy Cons? Woohoo! Yes. This guy. Me too. Woo. Uh, I'm more excited for that Pro Controller though. It looks it looks yes. cool because it has the splats all over it. So, really cool. Uh, I really really, really cool. Some, I really want some. Uh, is it Neapolitan? I think Neapolitan. Uh, ice cream with the chocolate, the pink, and the green. How did I know this was gonna go back to ice cream with you, Ed? Cause it's just like it, like that would be cool if Nintendo got with like Ben and Jerry's and did a Splatoon marketing ice cream for the summer for that game and did it as like uh not only for the game's release but do it as a like a weekend release be like uh to stay cool with the squids have them have that Ben and Jerry ice cream. I, that's just me. I'm, I, I'm just, hey, you they like to see Mark Mario and other Nintendo properties. Might as well do it with Ben and Jerry to get some food out of it. I'll heck, I'll buy it. It worked for the Gears of War series, so why not work for Splatoon? Man, I don't even know what to say to you right now. Would you buy it if they offered you my Nintendo points? Maybe. Maybe. She to like a five dollar coupon on accessories. Mm. Stop! Stop! 
No. <laughs> no. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. <laughs> do not deny it. I hate you right now. I know. Because <laughs> you know I'm right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Well, I was going to get into the switch tax thing, but I mean, we've talked about that a million times. Yeah. The battle chasers and oh the last thing axiom verge is coming to switch yes physical release uh that was where the switch tax thing was going uh you know sine mora dx and battle chases are getting the ten dollar switch tax uh but also they announced that axiom verge was coming to switch at 39.99 uh and it's the multiverse edition that's coming to wii u and ps4 already and I think Vita, right? Like it's coming to Vita too, I think. Yes. But you know, I'm excited. I'm really excited for Axiom Verge to be on Switch. It's like the one game I was holding out for maybe rebuying a Vita, but now I'm not going to. <laughs> Sorry, Sony. <laughs> Sorry, Sony. Uh, not that you're supporting the Vita, but <laughs> uh, too much. Uh, yeah. Too much of a burn. And they need an ice pack. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing about it is they're going to make money off of it. You know, I think people, are, like you said, people don't mind the $10 uh, switch tax. I don't think it's a tax or anything. Uh, but yeah, if it's, if it's making sense business-wise, you know, people having that box. The box art is going to be hopefully good. Uh, the box art to be different than all the other systems for some reason. But yeah, it people is. of... Is it different? No, it's the same. Was um, people bought Puyo Puyo on Switch more than they bought the other systems, and you know they got that free keychain and stuff. Uh, two so, keychains. Oh, two key keychains. Yeah, one's a so, one's I mean, a Puyo, and one's a one's a T block from Tetris. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, you know Rhyme is doing the same thing, so it's good that if we're paying this ten ten extra dollars for these games. At least they're rewarding us now. Yes, because the CD and some other stuff is already packed in. Just for it coming to Switch, I think people will like are happy they're getting the game that they want it on that platform. So you know that's more money for them to make up for, I guess, for financial thing. You know, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited. Gosh, I'm really excited for this. I'm watching the trailer right now. The Switch trailer. They released a Switch mm -hmm. trailer. And uh gosh, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, just oh. watching it. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. Corey. Huh. Corey, host. Get back to the show. I, I'm sorry. This uh, Axiom Verge is so good. And the fact I that know, they released which... a Switch specific trailer is just amazing. I, I know, but you're getting distracted. You're gonna you have to end the show first. I know, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just get distracted because <laughs> I I'm sorry. You know how I am. Okay, so uh this sounds like a good place to end the show. We talked about a lot, but Ed and I are going to be doing a Nintendo uh watch along for the spotlight. Uh it's gonna be a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, than a normal press conference. It's only going to be about 30 minutes uh, according to some things that have come out. Uh, but Ed and I are going to be live streaming on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash... I don't, I don't know where we're going to do it yet. NGR. I don't know if NGR even has a Twitch... <laughs> Twitch page, well, but whatever we did for last last Twitch stream, we might end up doing again. Actually, you know what? I think I think I did make one for NGR. Let me check real quick. But and I will tweet it out and let everybody in the Facebook group know and stuff like that. And I, I'm sure Ed will let people know too. Uh, yes. Um, also, we, everybody, we're going to do, do a pre-show, right? Kind of like a. Yes, uh, we're going to do some maybe some final predictions before the show. We're yes. going to do some uh, cool things during the show. We're gonna, just going to do a commentary during the show kind of thing, and you can watch it with us. And then after the show, we're going to do a live. Uh, we're going to do a live 
uh, Pow Block episode reacting to the uh, the conference, and then we're going to talk about a little bit what's happening on the Treehouse. So, and then you can watch it with us uh, after the Pow Block recording. We are going to continue to watch the Treehouse stuff together, and you can hang out with us. It's not really going to be a show, but it's just we're just going to. You can hang out with us and, and live stream with us and just hang out while we eat our snacks and, and yes. have a good yeah. time. <laughs> so everybody who's watching this, my uh, um, my E3 snack list should be up. So if you guys go to NGRradio.com um, and go to Eddie V's blog, you'll see my snack list of things that I'm doing. If not, check also the NGR radio and our uh, Pop Block Facebook page and you'll see it there also. Yeah, yeah, we will have live streams in, in those places as well. Um, Ed, one final E3 prediction before Tuesday for Nintendo. Yep. Uh, I think for Nintendo, uh, Sega will actually reveal their actual game, um, that they announced in Japan. Uh, also, I think Capcom might actually bring the Disney Afternoon. Uh, I know you said one, but I think Capcom will also <laughs> bring the Disney Afternoon collection, uh, the first one. I know they're not bringing the second one, but I think they'll probably bring the first one to Switch also. Mm. I have mm. more, but I will not say it. You have to listen. Well, I'll plug later, I should say. I know. Oh, man. I I still think they're going to tease a Metroid game. I know that's not an original thought. I know that's mm-hmm. not a, you know, whatever. But I still think, you know, I still think a lot of people really want Metroid. And I think they're going to announce. I, I think they're just going to show a Metroid logo. Yes. And that's it. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be the title of the game or not. I think they're just going to show just the word metroid and i think people are just gonna freak out yeah and i know they're focusing on 28 or 2017 games so that doesn't mean they can't tease what's coming in 2018 so um yeah so ed oh. what yes what'd you do what's happening uh, i just want platinum in the brain being at a three and vanquish to the switch <sighs> Can they just can they just port Bayonetta two over and then tease us with Bayonetta three? Thanks, that'd be great. Thanks, Platinum, for doing that for us. Breaking news: Platinum is bringing their whole library to Switch. Oh shoot! Good luck and God bless. <laughs> Good luck and God bless with that one. Because if they oh, if geez. they do if they do, I'm probably going to freak out. <laughs> Oh, that means I, I need to go shopping. I need to go. I need to find me a Nintendo shirt. I probably got to go to Hot Topic or something. Uh, I want to have a my Nintendo shirt for uh, Tuesday. Yeah, I I need to find something too. I need to make some layouts. Okay, so if you if you want to follow us, we are going to be live streaming from twitch.tv slash NGR Radio. Uh, so come follow us there, and you know you can watch us live stream some stuff. It'll be fun. It'll be a good time. I gotta make some. I need to make an overlay. I need to make a cool. Ah, uh, man! I gotta make some stuff. I gotta make some stuff for this live stream. This is very important, Edward. Very important. I know. <laughs> well, Ed, oh, I love the overthinking music for Mario Bros. Three. Oh, sorry. Where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at. That's Retro Code. You can also hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, um, the Anonymous Radio Network, and other podcast apps. Also, check out my other podcast, World 101 Podcast, at shoutengine.com. Follow us also on Twitter at World 1 underscore 1 Podcast. We just had a discussion with the designers and the creators of Shovel Knight from Yacht Club Games. Do check out that episode. Literally funny. So in-depth. We laugh at you talking about having some like nerds on a podcast or just like real gamers me larry uh 
And the guys at Yacht Club, we just literally nerded out. And it's completely hilarious. Yes, Corey, they gave you the shout out. And they actually thank you for buying the five games <laughs> of uh, Shovel Knight. Well, I so. probably bought, I think I bought that game. I bought it digitally on Wii U and 3DS. I own yeah. the physical copy for Wii U. I own the Switch version, obviously. And then uh-huh. I own it on PS4 and Xbox One. So I've actually... They actually... <laughs> they actually- uh, they actually have an answer for that. I did ask them a question about people buying multiple copies. You have to listen to find out. But yes, World One One Podcast at shoutengine.com. Uh, you can find us there. Also, you can find my writings of uh, optional opinion at IGN.com under anime E N I M E and my series The Moment at skirmishfrogs.com. Uh, also check out my rating uh writings on ngrradio.com. So you guys can check out the Ghost Recon Wildland the rhyme uh, reviews and I'll be doing some E3 prediction blogs coming soon and I will also be doing my uh, backlog uh, bash blowout for optional opinion uh, on some of the NGR radios. I'm um, doing my journal name right there. Um, so do check that out and like I said, check out the snack list that I'll be posting up there also. Um, join our Nintendo Power Block Facebook page where you guys can interact with us um, and the NGR radio Facebook page. You know, we want to hear what you guys think about Nintendo and other video games and stuff. And check out the lyrical one on Twitch. Um, that's my Let's Learn series that you guys could also check out so yeah you can find me on there nice nice ads everywhere yes well you can find me at Corey and hd on instagram Corey hudson and hd on twitter you can find this show every tuesday and friday i guess so i'm try- i'm sorry that we haven't had an episode in a couple weeks or a couple days i don't know how long is that like 10 days uh you can yes. f- also find me on NGR Radio uh, podcast where Ed was on the show on this coming Monday's episode, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. I'm sorry. I just I have so much crap in me right now that it's just like, bleh. Uh, <laughs> you can find all of our shows on NGRRadio.com and on our YouTube page at NGR Radio. Come subscribe. We've gained a couple subscribers this week. I'm really proud that we've we are growing slowly but steadily. Uh, so let's see what else. Uh, you can join the Facebook group and all that. What Ed said already. Uh, we're gonna try to grow the Pow Block Facebook group. I know I've been saying that for a couple, like a month now, but uh, we're really gonna try to to grow this show's as big as NGR Radio proper. Uh, I'm really proud of what Ed and I do here. So. Uh, thanks thanks for listening and, and watching and putting up with our uh, tangents off the topics that we bring <laughs> so um, Ed I love you and fans thank you so much for watching and or listening and until next week live we're out woohoo